So my favorite things to teach in high school math are how to solve different types of equations. So I'm going to make a video that's going to take you through how to solve all the different types of equations you would encounter uh, throughout your high school career. So we'll start with grade 9, we'll go all the way through to grade 12, we'll look at all the different types of equations you might solve, and some of the tips and tricks you can use to help um, be able to solve these types of equations. I hope you enjoy. So let's start with grade 9. In grade 9, you'll start with basic degree 1 equations, linear equations, where the variables always will only have an exponent of 1 on them. If you want to be able to solve a degree 1 equation, um, we're just looking for what value of the variable, what value of y, would make this equation true. So what plus 7 equals negative 3? And you'll learn quickly that um, to isolate a variable, you want to apply inverse operations. So the opposite of adding 7, let's move it over by doing the inverse operation. Let's subtract 7. And we get y equals negative 10. Negative 10, if I plugged it back into the equation, negative 10 plus 7 is negative 3. That's the value of the variable that makes the equation true. And as we progress through the more difficult equations, this is always our goal, just to figure out what value of the variable makes the equation true. Here's another grade 9, so everything in red is going to be a grade 9 equation. Uh, this time, the x is being multiplied by 2. The inverse of multiplying by 2 is divide by 2. Do it to both sides we get x equals half of negative 30, which is negative 15. That's the number that when you double it, you get negative 30. Whenever brackets start showing up, it's always useful to start distributing to get rid of the brackets. So 2x minus 16 equals negative 8x plus 4. Whenever you have more than one term with a variable, so I have two terms with a variable, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get those terms on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to move the negative 8x to the left to pair it with its like term 2x and then move all the terms without a variable to the other side of the equation. So take the constant terms, well 4 is already on the right side of the equal sign, bring the negative 16 over by doing the inverse which is adding 16, collect your like terms, divide the 10 and we get our answer of 2. This is a type of equation that people love the shortcut for. Grade 9s always love to cross multiply, even when they're not supposed to. But this is a scenario where cross multiplication is allowed when we have fraction equals fraction. What we can do when we have fraction equals fraction, denominator of one side multiplied by the numerator of the other side, gets put on one side of the equation, on the other side, 4 times x minus 5. And then it's just like the previous question. Distribute 4x minus 20. Get all the variable terms on one side, so 6x minus 4x goes on the left and negative 20 minus 18 goes on the right and we get 2x is negative 38 after we collect like terms divide the 2 and we'll figure out negative 19 is the value of the variable that makes the equation true. Let's do one more grade 9 equation before I move on to grade 10. So this equation I have multiple fractions but they're not set equal to each other so cross multiplication isn't what to do but we still want to get rid of these fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by a common denominator. Common denominator between 2 and 3 is 6. Multiply both sides by 6. Remember, whatever you do to one side when solving an equation, you have to do to the other side. So multiply both sides by 6, and the fractions will be gone. So when I distribute this 6 to these two fractions, watch what happens. So I'll have 6 times 3x plus 2 divided by 2 minus 6 times x plus 1 divided by 3 equals 6 multiplied by x. And what happens, 6 divided by 2, that's 3, 6 divided by 3, that's 2, the fractions are gone. So what I have here is 3 times 3x plus 2, so that's 9x plus 6. And here I have negative 2 times x plus 1, so that's negative 2x minus 2 equals 6x. Collect some like terms that I've got here, 9x minus 2x is 7x, 6 minus 2 is positive 4. I'll move the variable terms to the left, 7x minus 6x equals the constant term to the right, negative 4, x is negative 4. So I think that would be the hardest equation you would have to solve in your grade 9 math career. Let's progress on to grade 10, where the variable on the, sorry, the exponent on the variables is no longer always going to be 1, like it was in grade 9. You're going to encounter some degree 2 terms. So when the highest degree term 
in an equation is 2, what you have is a quadratic equation. To solve a quadratic, there's a few different strategies. For this one, and what you should always check for first, you should check if factoring works. So try and find numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 8. So multiplies to 12, product of 12, and a sum of 8. The numbers that work are 2 and 6. So what we can do is we can rewrite this standard form quadratic into its factors, into the things that multiply together to give us the standard form quadratic. Since the numbers that satisfy the product and sum are positive 2 and positive 6, these are the factors that when you multiply them together, you get x squared plus 8x plus 12. And now that we've broken this down into something multiplied by something equals 0, well, we know the only way the product of two things can be 0 is if either we make this one be 0 or if we make this one be 0. And so I've made two little equations that I'm going to solve. So I get one possible answer for x of negative 2. And watch, if I plug negative 2 into the equation, I would get negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, multiplied by 4. 0 times 4 is 0, so negative 2 works. But also, x could be negative 6. That would give me negative 4 times 0, which is also 0. So this time, we have two possible answers for x. So when we have a degree 2 equation, you could get two answers. When we had degree 1 in grade 9, you would always only get one answer. Degree 2, you could get two answers, you could get one, or you could get zero. Let's do another one. Well, this one isn't set to zero. So before we factor it, let's rearrange it so all the terms are on one side. Everything's on the left now. And now let's go ahead and factor it. But notice this one's a bit different because A is not 1. So when we find our product and our sum, we need to find a product of A times C, 2 times 6, which is 12, and a sum of B, which is 7. The numbers that satisfy that product and sum are 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 4 is 7. And what we have to do here is um, factor this using decomposition. We have to break up the 7m into 3m plus 4m. We can't go right to our factors with this one because the a value was not 1. And then we look at the first two terms as a group, and we look at the last two terms as a group, and we take a common factor from each group. The first group, I could common factor out a 2m. Divide them both by 2m, I would get, sorry, not 2m. I can only take out an m. I would get 2m plus 3, right? 2 doesn't go into 3. I can only take out an m. They both have an m. Divide them both by m, I get 2m plus 3. This one, sorry, I can take out a 2, right? 2 goes into 4 and 6. Take out a 2. Divide them both by 2, I get 2m plus 3. And you should notice you get this common binomial here. So I can common factor out that common binomial of 2m plus 3. When I take that out from both of these terms, I'm left with an m plus 2. So that's my second factor. Now it's been fully factored. Set each factor to 0 to figure out what would make the product be 0. So either the product would be 0 if this factor was 0, or the product would become 0 if this factor was 0. So once again, I have two answers. Negative 3 over 2 is one possible answer. And a second possible answer would be negative 2. Well, oh, here's a special, I threw a special product in here. You would have learned about a difference of squares. And that factors to a minus b times a plus b. So for this one, we have a difference of two squares. The first number is a 4b squared, right? 4 squared is 16, b squared is b squared. And 1, you can think of that as 1 squared. That would factor following the rule to 4b minus 1 times 4b plus 1. So difference of squares show up quite often, so it's useful to be able to recognize them when you have a difference of two perfect square numbers. If factors like this, set each factor to zero, and we would get a quarter when we set this factor to zero, and when we set this one to zero, we would get negative a quarter. So once again, two possible answers. What if it's not factorable? Like if we were to try and find numbers that multiply to 15 and add to negative 10, you wouldn't be able to find them. Now that doesn't mean there are no answers to this, it just means there are any rational answers. There may be some irrational answers. And how we, find, how we determine if there are is we try quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, so negative negative 10, which is 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times the a value times the c value all over 2 times the a value. Now if the discriminant, the thing under the square root, um, becomes a negative number, then we'll get no answers. If it becomes zero, we'll get one answer. But if it's a positive number, we'll get two answers. They'll just be irrational answers, which is fine. So let's check it out. 
underneath the square root, the radicand, we'll get 100 minus 60, which is 40. So it's a positive number, so there are two answers. We should just simplify this um, radical expression here. Uh, we could break root 40 into root 4 times root 10, which is 2 root 10. So I'll write that, 2 root 10 over 6. And then I could common factor a 2 from the numerator, divide both the terms by 2, and then 2 over 6 reduces to a third. And my final answer, I would have 5 plus or minus root 10 over 3. So 5 plus root 10 over 3 is a 0, and 5 minus root 10 over 3 is a 0. Both of those make this side of the equation equal 0. They're irrational answers. If I were to type this in, I would get big, long decimal numbers that would go on forever that can't be expressed as fractions. So we just leave it in exact form like this.